Today I'm doing a demonstration painting of the Moreton Bay fig tree. Uh, this is from a photograph that I took a number of years ago. What I like to do before I start a painting is just uh, work on a, a small thumbnail sketch. Uh, this I do just with a 2B pencil. I like to uh, work out where my light, the uh, three values are, my lightest, my darkest and my mid-tone. Once I've done this I'm a lot more familiar with my subject and uh, I can work out where the big shapes are, what to leave out most importantly and um, also to uh, establish the mood and the feel that I want to bring into my painting. After I've done this I do some colour uh, swatches. Um, of uh, just getting a feel for the colours that I'm going to use on my painting and uh, when I do this I allow the colours to run into each other. Here I'm mixing my colours uh, beforehand in the in my palette. I'm working. Uh, I try and work with a restricted number of, of colours. Uh, I've got yellow ochre, burnt sienna. I've used a, a perylene green, and I've got a purple uh, that I've mixed using alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. And um, so they're, they're all pre-mixed. You'll notice that the consistency of or the ratios of paint to water is, is fairly equal in this first wash. So this is really just to, because uh, there's no white of the paper showing, so I'm really just wanting to um, get it all to mix into each other um, and I'm also painting the lightest value. So I've just wet the paper with a little bit of water from the spray bottle and I'm really just dropping in colour um, where, where I see it, um, thinking about the background as well and some of the, the light areas on that tree. So I'm letting the colour and the paint just run into each other. Watercolour does some, has some beautiful effects if you allow it to just do, it, do its own thing and um, one thing I've learnt um, painting in watercolours for many years is you really do have to let the medium um, have, a, have a say. Um, the more you control it, the, the less you 
you um, you get some of those lovely effects that just happen. So uh, this first wash is very loose. I've got a, a brush, about a number eight brush, so it holds plenty of water. And as you can see, I'm just allowing it all to mix, getting drips of paint. That really doesn't matter at this stage. Uh, this will really bring some nice light into the painting. Now that my painting is dry, I've dried that off with a hairdryer and I'm just going to start working into painting the tree and I pre-wet the paper uh, just to allow some of the paint to run in and again um, I'm dropping colour in and just letting gravity with the paper being on quite a, a angle uh, to, to um, get the paint to, to just run. I'm, putting in different tones. I've started with my lightest tone using a bit of that burnt sienna and now I've mixed up a slightly thicker mix of paint and this is using the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. So I'm putting in my light value and my dark value at the same time just being aware of where the highlights are on that tree, where the light source is coming from and um, where to drop that dark colour. So I'm really just using that lightest value um, to, to get the dark in and uh, softening an edge here and there as I go along with a little bit of water.
the main tree trunks are painted I'll then work on the foliage and I've just mixed a very dark perylene green and I, I would have put a little bit of um, ultramarine in there and I'm, I'm really just um, not wanting to get too detailed with the foliage um, the main focus of the trees the tree trunks and um, so I'm really just um, including some shapes to represent leaves a few individual leaves here and there and I'll I'll then bring in a rigger and um, just add a, a join a few branches up up to the foliage as we go along so I'm not going to add a lot of highlighting there I'd really like to keep that foliage fairly dark so there's no competition uh, with with the tree I've also painted into the background there is a building a yellow a um, a warm yellow ochre and burnt sienna wash over that building and I've also indicated some shadows uh, that are that are on the building at the back I'm not going to do any more work into that I really do want to keep that fairly simple it's really about the light um, on the tree those lovely shapes and uh, the shadows on the ground as well so now I'm just indicating what's in the background there's a couple of trees in the background um, that also takes your eye for a little bit further into the picture just by indicating what's beyond beyond the tree so I'm going to treat this fairly light I've got to make sure I don't over detail this or bring too much emphasis because then obviously it will start competing with the tree and my focal point is very much on that tree I think doing that thumbnail sketch up front uh, it's important to make those decisions in your painting earlier on and you just straight stay true to to those decisions right the way through your painting and then there's not going to be any any confused fusing areas or or um, or sort of weak areas that can sometimes happen if you start to over detail I also like to look at the whole painting at the same time and not really hone into too much detail er, too early um, in this way sometimes if you you start to over detail some areas um, you can kind of get a bit um, lost and, and um, caught up with it and then all of a sudden um, you kind of realize that there's uh, the focal point in that you've now lost lost the focal point because you've overemphasized other areas so to stop this from happening I always make sure I write at the end then I bring in some detail so um, it's big shapes uh, larger brushes uh, generally and then you work to, with a smaller brush towards the end and now I'm just indicating some of those um, shadows on the ground there's uh, shadows create um, great patterns that you can work in I'm, I'm adding a cool and a warm color here so I'm starting with a, a purple and then I'm running a little bit of my burnt sienna in and I'm also adding a little bit of tone so into that there's colors mixing and then there's that little bit of dark here and there and that's just going to set those shapes in really well I'm also considering an edge here and there I'm leaving a hard edge on one side and just slightly creating a softer edge on the other that's also going to blend that shape into the the ground and uh, I'll make it look as though it's a lot more natural just a little bit of texture uh, with a brush uh, just to indicate the, the ground there uh, sometimes a bit of toothbrush splatter always works really nicely on that and I'm getting close to finishing this I don't like to over detail a painting uh, so I'm just adding a few little lights here and there
Okay, now I'm just finishing the painting off using a little bit of dry brush. I'm adding some contours to that tree, to the tree, just to some of the, the main limbs uh, that are at the front uh, of the tree to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. Uh, so this, this is dry brush and it's a very, quite a, a thick mix of paint and here I'm just going to blend that in in a couple of places and um, yeah just just trying to get those contours working but like like many things uh, less is always more so I'm really just going to selectively put it in some areas on each of those branches it doesn't need to be all the way along one area just here and there will be enough to, to bring the tree out a little bit more and, and add that detail. But I, I think overall there's enough light coming into that painting. That's really what I wanted. Lots of um, light coming through, showing a, a sunlit day and bringing out some of the character of that tree. This is my finished painting of a Morton Bay fig tree. Thank you for watching.